Shannon Dawson will go straight into questions for Coach. What do you like about what you guys done during the bye week? You know, we got a lot of people some rest and a lot of young guys some reps. And we asked the two best things, right? So, Shannon, uh, keep developing those young guys. Go ahead. Go ahead. If you, yeah. No, I'm good. Yeah. You've talked about the red zone touchdown percentage, what you'd like to get to. Is, is there something that you've noticed that you're, the reason why you're not at that mark, at least through four games at least? Yeah. I mean, um, there's twice down there at the end that we didn't really try to score. Is that would skew it, wouldn't it? I'm asking you. <laughs> of course. I mean, statistically, you know, data-wise, like you're looking at like the whole game or just like all of it. Yeah, because well, the last two times we got down there, we ran, we we kicked the field goal, we ran it on third down, and then we were up 40 points, and we. Emory was in there and we ran it on fourth down. So those twos kind of skew it. But yeah, I mean, if those two times we score touchdowns, I'd be kind of happy if we didn't try to. Georgia Tech made a new defensive coordinator mm -hmm. on the staff on Sunday. How much does that make the situation more complex or different as far as your preparation, if it does at all? No, it definitely changes things because there's elements of unknown. Um, you know, I don't know much about um, the guy that they just hired other than like just researching him over the past couple of days and you know I'm sure they're not doing that to keep everything exactly the same you know I'm just, I'm just my thought process you know so I'm sure there's going to be some changes how much they can change in a week you know I don't know I mean I would doubt that it would be like wholesale change it'd probably be little things here and there I would guess but yeah it, Definitely changes our approach because there, there's just elements of unknown. We got to go into the game and we got to have a plan, but you have to have a plan, you know, to change if if things are just completely different. And even you know, beyond the coaching change on defense, when you watch Georgia Tech and their personnel, what are some of the challenges for this week? You know, they're they're a good looking they're a good looking unit. You know, they're long, they're they're physical. Um, you know. It's, it's a little bit of, you know, what happened to them last week is every coach's fear. You know, I mean, you go into games where you're favored and you hope that, you know, kids respect opponents and you hope that kids go out and play and you look across the nation. My man over here is talking about statistics. Well, I can tell you a statistic that's going to remain true to the end of time is half the teams win and half the teams lose every Saturday. That's 100% been the way every Saturday college football has ever been played. And so, and not all the time does the favorite win every time, right? It happens every week that, you know, teams don't, you know, respect their opponents the way that the coaches preach that they should respect them. And the other team comes out and, um, and they get things going, they get you on the heels, and then you fight, you know? And so, you know, I feel for where they were at last week because in my career I've been there. Everybody that's coached football has been there. And so, uh, but that's not the team that walks out onto the field every Saturday for them. You can see, you know, the week before that, that wasn't the team, right? So ultimately we're going to get their best effort. We know that, um, you know, we don't know exactly schematically exactly what they're going to do. Uh, we have a, a, a idea based on what they've done, but are there going to be some wrinkles? I'm sure there will be. Kind of in the same vein, and you, know, you mentioned teams have to be ready to play the opponent they have even in their favor. You know, you guys have three opponents where you've had even big favorites. How do you make sure the offense, you know, isn't coming out firing in games like that? Well, you preach the same thing, and you hope your kids are listening. You know, and there's no, you know formula that I can sit here and tell you that look this is the exact way to do it if there was then somebody would bottle it and sell it and make a lot of money because every every team out there every week struggles with the same thing right now I, I'm very happy that so far this year that our kids have just went and played football and hopefully you get to the point to where you go out on the field and play football regardless of what the score is regardless of who the opponent is 
It's just 11 guys on the football field executing football. Don't look at the scoreboard because that'll lie to you. Don't look at the other team's uniforms because that'll lie to you. All you got to worry about is your job, you know. And so, you know, understanding that, you know, there's a reason why we're at this point and it's because we're doing things a certain way. Uh, keep doing it, right? Because ultimately all it takes is a little slip and things could go the other way. But, you know, put blinders on. Uh, the, the biggest deal is there's a lot of praise going around right now, which is dangerous. I think everybody can understand that. Um, and my biggest uh, message to guys is, look, man, and not to say that anybody in here are those guys, but those are the same guys that will um, that'll rip you when you don't do good too, right? So just stay right there in the middle and even kill and do your job, you know? And so that's, that's where you start doing that, you become a pretty efficient team. Coach Cristobal was saying that you might get uh, Elijah or running back soon, maybe even as early as this week. Yeah. What, yeah, if you could talk about maybe the, the extra dynamic he can add if it's an position for you. Heck, I'm looking forward to it, to be honest with you. You know, I mean, um, I love that kid's demeanor. You know, he's um, obviously a big body, talented kid, right? Um, I'm, I'm eager to get him on the field, you know, because I think that he can add an element in a lot of different ways to our offense. Not that those other guys aren't doing that, but it's good to have it's good to have a handful of those big guys. I mean, we've gone in several games where we've had to have a couple more personnel groupings than I would like based on the fact that we're not, you know, we don't have the numbers there that we should, right? And so he, he adds a, a number there that, that allows you to get into some heavy stuff where you're not sitting there looking at it on a sheet of paper and you're like, well, if one guy goes down, we can't run these six plays, which that's not what you want to do, right? And so he just he brings some some depth that would be very welcome. Similarly, uh, the Chris Ball also mentioned that uh, Javante Smith is getting closer to yes. returning. Um, obviously, you guys have a very talented running back room already. How much would he add to that room if he's healthy? Well, I mean, you look around the nation, you see how quick running back rooms uh, the numbers go down, right? And so that's a room that I've said all along that. You know, having depth in that room is, is probably the most crucial thing on offense because those guys' job description is very physical, right? And they get nicked up a lot. Uh, so, yeah, you know, I would very, you know, warmly welcome him adding his name to that group as well. You, know, you mentioned uh, young guys getting more opportunities at reps during the bye week. Even in the last couple of games, uh, you know, we've seen – Players like Ray Ray Joseph and Christopher Johnson get some more reps in games. How are they coming along, and how can two of the fastest players on your team like that really just make your job easier? Yeah, I mean, I think you can see um, if you look at the games, you know, those guys are getting more comfortable. They're making plays. The ball is hitting their hands more. Um, so as the season goes, you're going to see more and more guys make plays. You know, people are going to step up. People are going to get more opportunities too because, you know, there's going to be times where injuries happen. Somebody gets nicked up, have to come out for a couple of series, and um, and other people get opportunities. And so, you know, I do feel like that uh, we're at the point in the season where there's going to be some peripheral people that haven't necessarily gotten overly involved are going to start getting more and more involved. And so we're kind of at that point to where you know the ball. Uh, needs to start uh, moving around a little bit. Um, AJ Allen did not play last game. Uh, how's he doing? How's He's doing good. I expect him to be full go. I don't know. Um, you know, he he probably could have played. You know, but he, he's doing good. He's he's repping. He's doing good. But you, you guys have been pretty dominant on offense so far. Um, not just give me a percentage, but it feels like maybe you haven't even shown a lot of parts of the offense yet. Is, is that an accurate assessment? There's still a lot more that you guys can do. Well, I mean, I think that, you know, you want to you wanna build week to week, you know, and you and you kind of, you got to evolve with the people that you're playing with, too. I think there, there's a, there's a um, combination of things that have to occur through the season. And I think that building some formation groups where other guys get highlighted are important. Uh, not to say that you run you know, something that's just 
out of the world play wise, but some window dressing, different personnel groupings are always the the deal. You know, there's always going to be new wrinkles every week. We're going to have things that we haven't done, uh, formations that we haven't done. Uh, so that that'll that'll never not exist. Uh, but you do like to keep what you do good, what you do good, right? We'll do a few more for Coach Johnson. Coach Ziggler got those two touchdown catches uh, against Temple before the bye week. What have you noticed that's done for his confidence as you guys have taken a moment just to, to focus on what's important during this bye week? Nothing. I mean, the kid's confident. That had, catching touchdowns has got nothing to do with it. I mean, he's been consistent since the day I got here. So I don't think he was overly worried about, you know, getting in the end zone. I mean, he, the ball uh, finds him a good bit, right? And so he's been – very happy when other guys score, which is what I worry about more than when, when they score, right? Uh, the biggest deal is right now is, you know, being happier for when your teammate scores, and which he is 100% happier when they score, you know? Now, it was good to see him get in the end zone, but I don't think we have a group that's overly concerned about when they score. I think they are overly concerned about when we score. What did you like about what Henry Parrish did last season? I think Henry's been pretty damn consistent, you know. Um, you know, week in and week out, I mean, he's um, he's got a great attitude. He, he makes plays when you need him to make plays. You know, I mean, I don't, there isn't much to say bad about him, you know. He's, he's just, he's producing, which is what you want. So far this year, Tyler Van Dyke's been one of the best QBs in the country. Just now, what do you think has allowed him to, to gel so quickly in the offense and, and how has he improved his accuracy? Because I was looking at him, he has like his one pick hasn't had thrown since week one. And well, I think when he has like two turnover worthy throws, you know, according to Brooklyn Buffalo, like what, <laughs> what's, what's made him so accurate and work so well in his offense? You know, I mean, I, I, I think that, you know, schematically it fits what, he, what he's comfortable with, right? Um, and I do think that the, a quarterback is a very dependent position, you know, I mean, you know, sometimes when things are going good, they get too much credit, and when things are going bad, they get a little too much blame. Uh, I, I would say that 10 other guys around him are doing their job at a very high level. And our old line, he doesn't get touched. You know, they're, they're keeping guys off of him. He's standing upright. That's probably got the most to do with his accuracy, to be quite honest with you. Uh, and guys are getting open. You know, I mean, um, receivers are straining in their routes and, and they're, they're working defenders and they're getting open, they're in the right spots. And, and those two things um, put together, you know, allow the quarterback to do their job, which again, I mean, we need 10 other guys around us when you play quarterback to do your job, you know, and I think that's a, you know, everything that he's got right now statistically is, is more of a, of a um, compliment to the people that are out there with him. The last is, question for Coach Johnson. Go for it. Go ahead. Uh, is, is doing very well. And Who's that? You have is doing very well nationally. Oh. Turnovers lost. Um, and leads the ACC. Uh, you know, how important is that category? Obviously, it's important. What goes into ensuring that that number is low? And do you guys do anything specifically different or spend more time on that than other programs you've been a part of? I don't know about other programs. I mean, we do have. Um, a ball security circuit we do during the week. Uh, we stress it hard. Uh, we have we have people that are stressing it every time a play is ran, and so there's not a play that's ran at practice that people aren't stressing ball security. And if you're not securing the ball the proper way, you get called out on it. You know, and um, you know there's pitchers taken all through practice, and when a pitcher is taken and you have poor ball security, that pitcher is sent to you. And so, um, you know, kids know what we expect as far as ball security. And, and that is never going to change um, from Coach Cristobal down. I mean, you know, the quickest way to, to lose a game is to turn the ball over. And if you turn it over in the wrong areas of the field, it's even more detrimental. And so we do harp on it a lot. I mean, but do we harp on it more than other programs? I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I think um, – we do emphasize it, we do have drills, we do talk about it in meetings, we talk about it when we pass people. Uh, we do like any walkthrough or anything that we do that you have a ball in your hand, and we make sure you secure it the right way. 
and um, you know it's working out right now obviously we're going to continue stressing it and hopefully that trend continues um, yes, another, okay. how much more difficult is it at this point of the season for, for you to game plan because of what other teams have seen I think um, you know when you get to this point in the season and even further along you know every offense and every defense has tendencies you know and so you work hard to to pinpoint what the tendencies are that could inhibit you from being successful but ultimately there hadn't been a good offense to ever play football that hadn't had tendencies and so basically people are going to gravitate to what they do well you know offense and defense i mean that's why you watch film and you game plan. If people didn't have tendencies, you wouldn't need to do that. And so, you know, you just try to ultimately make it a, a game of, of matchup where your guys are in position to make plays. Okay, well, last one. We're wrapping up. Okay. Mario said that uh, Mario talked about two or three receivers who are set to play a lot more in the coming weeks. I think you might have mentioned Larry Joseph. Mm -hmm. but, um, I wanted to ask how are Ray Joseph and Rashard Smith progressing in those terms and what has he shown you to possibly deserve more play? You know, I think that both of them, I'm very pleased with where they're at. You know, um, you know, more playing time, you know, that, that has a lot to do with flow of games. Um, and I think that they're going to get more playing time. They're going to get more touches as, as, as we move along through the course of the year. Uh, they're starting to get more touches now. You know, these last few games they've gotten more. Uh, we, have, we haven't really played a lot of snaps in the game. You know, we've been fairly efficient with the yards per play, uh, but we're not sitting here playing 80 to 90 snaps either. We're playing about 65. And so, you know, you know if you were playing 30 more snaps, then you'd have 30 more opportunities. But we're being pretty efficient. When I'm not mad about the number of snaps. I'm good with that. You know, I'm just making a statement that, you know, we, we don't go out there and, and play a ton of snaps. You know, I just, I like to be efficient with the ones we play. Uh, but I do think that as the weeks go, those two guys, you can see them getting extremely comfortable with their role and extremely comfortable with uh, everything in the passing game. Uh, we're having less communication errors, less route errors overall and so um, I would anticipate those guys touches to continue to, to go up. Awesome. Thanks Coach Thompson. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. it guys.